In 1998, the domestic partner law was adopted in San Francisco. It wasn't just about gay rights, but human rights. Healthcare isn't a human right. In 1998, the domestic partner law was adopted in San Francisco. It wasn't just about gay rights, but human rights. Healthcare isn't a human right. What are human rights would be life, liberty, and property. Healthcare doesn't fall under any of those. The law stated that companies that do business within the city are required to offer benefits to domestic partners of said employees. At this time, same-sex marriage had not been legalized in any state, but these laws were the first step towards acceptance. San Francisco's ordinance actually marked the first time a government entity has mandated that private employers provide benefit plan coverage for domestic partners. Again, the reason why this is so important, aside from you know the basic human rights part, is that it gives a domestic partner medical insurance, disability insurance, life insurance, family leave, bereavement leave, parental leave, rights that a married couple doesn't have to fight for. This was truly a huge step. And then following this news, the Salvation Army pretty much said, yeah, no thanks. Rather than abide by the law and therefore get to continue to accept city funds, the Salvation Army told officials that it will scale back three programs for senior citizens and the homeless and no longer accept city money. Now, that decision is where I have a problem with them, not just because of the morals, but because Salvation Army would rather refuse to help domestic partners effectively ignore city law and have less money to help the elderly and homeless than simply give health insurance benefits to a gay couple. Except it's not just about health care. It's about the fact that they would be forced to recognize a sort of union or marriage between same-sex couples. And that goes against their religion. They are a religious organization. Now, do I like it? No. But that is what it is. It is their religious belief. And as far as religious beliefs goes, That's pretty benign. And also, in my opinion, no one should be forced to provide health care to their employees. That should not be forced by the government. It is an unnecessary regulation that will put a burden on small and medium-sized businesses. This isn't even about marriage rights. We aren't even at that point in history yet. This is just saying, hey, domestic partners also deserve health insurance so they can survive without mountains of debt if they get sick. You can, there are ways. There are other forms of insurance that can help pay or offset the costs. And forcing the employers to provide the healthcare isn't so great because that is just another thing that they will have to pay that will make it more difficult to continue running the business. Businesses have to run at a profit. Even charities like the Salvation Army have to run at a profit. And if you're just gonna put more regulations like this on businesses, that means they are probably going to be less likely to be able to hire more people. But back to the fact that there are ways to avoid huge medical debt, because there are. It's called supplemental insurance. Is it cheap to get supplemental insurance? No. However, if you rearrange the amount of what you spend on different things, you can afford it. Or at least afford, you know, the bare minimum protections. The best way to describe what supplemental insurance is, is that it insures your paycheck, in a sense. Look, if you're an organization that's all about helping people and your values are preventing you from doing that, maybe it's time to reconsider what you're all about. It depends on what values you would be violating in this sense. Eh, I don't particularly care because, well, it's a religious charity, so I kind of expect it to do something like this. So why do you care, really? If you don't like it, then just donate to another charity. I personally don't particularly care because this is really benign of a thing from a religious charity. 
The city wasn't asking the Salvation Army to come out and state that they renounce their Christian values or change what they preach. Besides, what about love thy neighbor? What about not judging others? What about, hey, it doesn't matter who you are and what you've done, you're a human being and worthy of forgiveness and being treated with kindness? Except literally none of those things have anything to do with providing health care. And again, that is in a sense recognizing a sort of union between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. So it's understandable why they would not want to be forced to do that. If you care so much about being a church and sticking your message to the world, then just be a church. If you're going to help people, then don't let there be strings attached and deem some people more worthy of your help than others. Again, that's not what they are doing here. They just don't want to be forced to recognize same-sex unions or marriages. What you would be requiring them to do would be, in a sense, recognizing those unions or marriages. So stop with your bullshit. Under the 1964 Civil Rights Act, religious organizations have an exemption that allows them to discriminate in hiring on the basis of religion. Effectively, what this means is that a charity can't be government funded if it were to use those funds to convert or discriminate, which is an extremely crucial point here. Can you imagine if racist discriminatory charities were trying to convert people and were legally thriving off government funds? It would be an absolute mess, and these laws are designed to protect people against organizations like that by at the very least not supporting them. I'm not saying the system isn't broken at times, but at least we've got that in place, I guess. However, this is where the Salvation Army comes into play. The Civil Rights Act says nothing about sexual orientation. The LGBTQ community didn't really exist then. And that's not to say that there weren't gay people, bisexual people, or that gender dysmorphia didn't exist, but the community was certainly not where it is today. Ah, <sighs> yeah, the good old days. But jokes aside, if you actually care about the fact that certain charities that have more bigoted views, why not just get rid of any charities having any funding from any government, whether it be federal, state, or local? Quite frankly, I don't think the government has any business in funding charities. I'm fine with charities not being taxed, However, giving them funding is just retarded. In 2004, the Salvation Army threatened to abandon their mission in New York when asked that job description state the company's mission clearly and ask employees to describe their church affiliation. Considering that it is, yet again, a religious organization, a religious charity, that makes sense for them to do that. You may not like it, but it makes sense. So if you don't wanna work for a religious charity that is going to do that, then don't work for a religious charity. He praised a human resources executive for ordering a Muslim employee to remove various Muslim artifacts from one center. His report also questioned whether it was a good idea to have hired a human resource director for the Army's Adult Services Agency who represents an Eastern religion. Yeah, that makes sense because it is a Christian charity organization. They have the total right to do that. Why is this so surprising to people? This is like being surprised by learning the fact that the earth is round and not flat. Several employees stated that the Salvation Army required them to sign forms revealing the churches they attended over the past 10 years, name their ministers, and agree to the Salvation Army's mission to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, but since when did it become a mandatory part of a job application to ask for those things? When you decided to join a religious charity organization, yeah. You should expect things like that. It's a no-brainer. Several employees say they were pushed out after years of working in secular jobs when they objected. Others said the new religious focus violated the social workers' ethics code and could have a chilling effect on their work. For example, preventing them from giving condoms to people infected with HIV or forbidding abortion counseling. Well, look at it this way. Giving out condoms could be, in a sense, promoting promiscuity. So that would be against the organization's religious beliefs. Now for giving out recommendations for abortion, that goes against religious beliefs again because many people believe abortion is murder. And scientifically speaking, it is murder. I've done videos on abortion and I've been able to explain it how it is murder in a secular manner. If you'd like to see my videos on that, 
I'll link them in the description. I was harassed to the point where I eventually resigned, said Margaret Geisman, a former human resources manager who said her superior asked for the religious and sexual orientation of her staff. As a Christian, I deeply resent the use of discriminatory employment practices in the name of Christianity. If the boss was asking for their religious beliefs, that could be understandable if they wanted to know that in the sense of maybe hiring or firing, because you might want people who have similar values and religious views to that of the religious organization. I can't stress that enough. Now, as far as the sexual orientation goes, then I would agree that the Salvation Army just firing someone for that reason is wrong. However, that might have just been an isolated incident because there are gay and trans employees that work for the Salvation Army. In 2015, an article was posted in the Morning Star in Britain with the headline, Salvation Army defends its use of forced unpaid labor. The Salvation Army claimed that it offers a vital service in getting long-term unemployed people back into work and seeks to support people with complex needs. Its employment services director, Helen Robinson, said that the charity would be concerned if its placements were turned down. However, one man said he was told to work in a Salvation Army shop, though he had a serious spinal injury. While he worked in fear of losing losing his benefits and going hungry. I'll give you half credit here. If he was told to do work in which he would not be able to do because of an injury and they told him to do it despite knowing that he had that injury, then yes, that's pretty shit. However, that's only if that is true. But of course, let's just say it is. Now as for the fact that it's unpaid labor, that's only half true. Yes, they don't get an actual salary or wage, but they do get other benefits. Plus, it may be a good way for those people to get back into the workforce. You don't want to just necessarily give everything out with no strings attached. Otherwise, people might abuse that system. Now, you could argue that they weren't giving him enough compensation because they did not give him any wage or salary. However, he was getting other benefits. Now, I don't know exactly how much those benefits are worth, and I don't know what exact job he had, so it could depend. Now calling this forced unpaid labor, that is false. It is not forced. They don't have to do it. They choose to do it because they are getting something for their buck, for their worth. These are probably people who would not normally be hired by regular employers. So yeah, you have to factor that in also to this. And of course, the third country in their international work here is what we're going to talk about. It's Australia. Now this has been acknowledged and occurred a while back. There isn't a lot of information on the subject as it happened between the 1940s and 1970s. Thankfully, there's plenty of records and articles that Australia came out with as the story developed that are pretty recent. During those four decades, the 1940s through the 70s, the Salvation Army accommodated and cared for more than 30,000 children throughout Australia. While most of the children had positive experience, about 60 of those stepped forward and reported abuse. The Salvation Army said they were deeply sorry and that seemed to settle things for the time being. From 2006, when the Salvation Army acknowledged it, up until 2013, when reportedly $15 million were paid to settle these cases privately, nothing more was said. Yes, these horrible things happened, as you do say in this video, and that is a legitimate thing to be upset about. Now, as for the compensation people received, yeah, you can kind of complain about that maybe not being enough, but that's a matter really of an opinion. Now, as though for she had said in this video that they should have prevented this from happening with some measures, it was the 1940s to the 1970s and everything. Of course it's gonna happen during them because no one, I think, had really any measures to protect children from sexual abusers. Now, I was wondering whether the Salvation Army tried to cover up these things. However, she never really said whether they covered it up or tried to cover it up. So if they didn't do that, I think that is a plus, considering the fact there are multiple organizations that have tried to cover up sexual abuse and child abuse. You also got to look at the fact that this is a worldwide organization. So yes, there is going to be incidents of mistreatment. In November 2016, they supported Safe Schools, an anti-bullying program for LGBTQ students. One month later, they reversed their position. It's not the fact that they support gay and trans people being bullied that they pulled out. It's because that some people have brought up possible problems with the program. 
I'll leave a link explaining this perhaps a bit more of some of the possible problems. In 2012, a Salvation Army branch in Vermont filed a bisexual mother after she told them she was bisexual. Yes, that is horrible the fact that she was fired for being bisexual. However, there are many people who work for the Salvation Army despite the fact they are gay or trans. So this could just be a one-off incident. It could be the person in charge of that portion of Salvation Army in that district or area was homophobic. You can't blame the entire organization for an action committed by one person or a couple of people. You gotta remember that there are still a lot of people who dislike gay and bisexual people and trans people. So there are going to be instances when things like this happen. You can't blame the entire organization for these few instances. When we know for a fact that there are many people who are gay and trans who work for the organization with no problem. You also have to take into account the fact that the LGBT community, gotta hate that term, is, well, they don't have a very good image because of very, very stupid Many people, like myself, who are gay, don't like to identify as LGBT because of that stupid from the community. Even as recent as 2017, the Salvation Army has rejected trans people in their adult rehabilitation center in Brooklyn. They're not alone, however. Four different drug centers were charged at that time. The New York City Commission on Human Rights didn't specify which violation belonged to which center, but we know that the Salvation Army Center in Brooklyn engaged in one or more of the following. Refusing to accept transgender people as patients or tenants, assigning trans people rooms based on their sex assigned at birth instead of their lived gender identity, unwarranted physical examinations to determine if trans people are on hormone therapy or have had surgery, segregating transgender patients into separate rooms. Now, again, I will mention the fact that the LGBT community has a bad reputation and trans people have also a very bad reputation. There's also the fact that most people don't even know what a trans person is, or they have very little knowledge of it because it is something very new to many people because it has only become very recent where we've talked about trans issues. So there is bound to be discrimination on this particular group. It takes time to change people's opinions. You can't just expect everyone to agree with you just right away. This has only happened within the last, like, what, 10 years where we've been talking about trans issues so much? For the longest time, I never even knew what the fuck a trans person was. At a time when the federal government is rolling back LGBTQ protections. Okay, that's bullshit. The federal government is not rolling back LGBT protections. Anyways, that's it for this video. I would like to say, Illuminati, you did have some points to bring up against the Salvation Army. However, many of your points were either, well, only half true, or just, you know, completely dumb and wrong. That being said, the points that you were able to bring up, I don't think are that great of reasons to not donate to the Salvation Army. Is the organization perfect? Far from it. However, is it the worst organization ever to exist on the earth? Definitely not. Anyways, if you've liked this video, please give it a like, subscribe, share it, comment down below and tell me what you thought. Follow me on all my social media. And also, follow me on Medium and share my articles there and give me 50 claps for each article. You can also support my work on Patreon or Ko-fi. Or if you want to get something for your donation, go to my merch store and buy a t-shirt or a mug. Do all this, and I'll see y'all later. Oh, and one more thing. Have a Merry Christmas.